Hey, thanks for joining us today. Service is going to start here in just a few minutes, but I want to take a couple uh, minutes first and celebrate a few things with you and then also tell you about some things that will be happening this week, how you can connect to them and know what's going on. First off, I want to celebrate our next gen leaders. It's been incredible seeing them come up with really creative ways to make sure that kids and students are still connected with and know that they're loved by their leaders, by their church, and ultimately by Jesus. Each Sunday, there's a team in Henderson that has been doing um, an incredible job of creating an online service just for kids. I mean, check this out. Here's a video of it. Aaron is leading this team right here, checking it out, um, letting them know, saying yo, 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 and letting kids um, feel like they have some familiar faces to see, just like they would on Sunday mornings. You can check that out. Uh, connect with your next gen leader, campus pastor, or ask us in the chat. We'd love to connect you with that. Also on onelifechurch.org slash update, there's lots of information on here. Um, for kids specifically, any of the information you need for the teaching or the time of worship for uh, preschool, elementary, preteen is on there. And then also our friend Phil and Orange, who has been connecting uh, midweek with some friends, just checking in, seeing how everyone's doing. They're creating some videos on there. Make sure you check those out. Those are pretty great as well. Students, your teaching is on here as well. And you know what I love seeing student leaders connecting with their kids um, and just finding unique ways to make sure they're still celebrated like i mean check this out they're meeting once a week uh, for wednesday night students just like they normally would and not only that now they're saying hey we want to meet more than just once a week and some of them are meeting three times a week because they just want that connection and there's also lots of opportunities to celebrate even for birthdays i know people have been doing parades showing up um, and just celebrating their uh, students and kids and saying hey we know we can't celebrate together but we're going to drive by honk horns from safe distances and make sure that they know they are loved also on this update page we want to highlight and celebrate again needaneighbor.org. Need a neighbor is just an opportunity for neighbors to come alongside other neighbors and help fill a need that you may need help with in this time. So if you need something, just go to that page, request help. Um, and if you're someone who said, hey, I, I can help, I could be someone who helps support that, you can fill out an application on that update page. Um, we've had about 30 people just from One Life uh, come in and say, hey, I can help. And um, almost 100 needs have been met in just the week that this has been up. So make sure we're continuing and celebrating, but also utilizing that as an opportunity for us to build a great city. Guys, next Sunday is Easter Sunday. We know it's going to be incredible. We're putting together um, some ser some really creative things for our service. We'll have normal service times that we've been having, 9 a.m., 11 a.m., 4 p.m., and 6 p.m. And really, it's never been easier to invite someone to church. All you have to do is take the link where you're watching right now and send that to some friends and say, hey, join me for church next week. It'd be really great to be able to connect with them as well. And also, some local churches in the community area um, have come together, and at 11 o'clock next week, um, they're going to be doing a citywide drive-in church, which is pretty cool. Um, and we know not everyone's going to be able to make it to that, so we will still have our normal online services like we've been doing. But there might be some people who said, I want to check this out. And it's a really great way to continue being a part of the city and connecting um, with multiple churches coming together. So the location is not quite set yet. We'll have more information about that um, via social media, so be checking that out. But it'll be at 11 o'clock. Um, you'll be able to drive in. If you're not sure what familiar with drive-in church is doing, um, Bethel Church has been doing it for a few weeks. They've learned a few things, and um, basically they create a service where there's a stage and a parking lot you drive in stay in your car um, and then you tune your radio just like a drive-in movie theater to be able to connect in in church together in one location so that's going to be pretty cool and a unique opportunity to check out so there's a lot of stuff going on make sure you check out the update page follow us on social media and use the hashtag one life anywhere uh, to let us know how you're connecting as a group as a team and as a family thanks so much and let's get started
Hello and welcome to Church Online. My name is Matt and I am trying way too hard to pull off this floral print shirt right now. I admit that. That said, we're glad you guys are here. Hello to all the families watching, to any kids watching. Hello to all the One Life students. And if you're watching by yourself, guess what? You're not really by yourself. The beauty of Church Online is that we're all in this service together right now. One thing you need to know about One Life is that we take everything through these three concepts, worship, love, and compassion. And we're here today to worship. I believe that everything we do can be an act of worship to God. And we're gonna start our service off in a little bit with a time of worship through singing. I'm not a very gifted singer. Maybe you are, maybe you're not, but I truly believe that God still loves our voices and he wants to hear them. So let's sing it out this morning. We're also gonna have a time to encounter God through biblical teaching and we're gonna worship that way. And you'll also have time to kind of respond to that later in the service. When it comes to love, love is how we connect to one another at this time. And it's probably one of those most important times to be connected than ever, right? So let us know you're here. Use the chat over here. Say hello. Say hello to friends. During the service, feel free to share what you're learning. Share any questions you might have. If you're having trouble with the service, you can ask a question and someone from our staff will try and answer it for me. So don't feel like you're interrupting the service. I know it feels awkward, but feel free to use the chat as much as you want. If you're struggling with something right now, if you would need prayer for anything, there's a live prayer button. There's a whole team of people just waiting to care for you during this time. Please feel free to use the live prayer. Towards the end of the service, watch the chat for a link to our live chat that's going to be happening after the service. It'll be about 15 minutes long and you'll have the opportunity to kind of connect with other people face to face through video, obviously, um, on what you learned about the message or just interacting about that content a little further. Compassion is how we love one another just as Jesus loved us by giving himself up for us. We get to give ourselves for the betterment of each other. And so like Sarah said before this, guys, we have the opportunity through the needaneighbor.org website to care for one another's needs during this time. If you have a need, please share it with us. You can also find a link to that on the One Life app. And if you're able to care for those needs right now, we'd love you to sign up as somebody who can fulfill those needs. As we get into the service, guys, I just wanna remind you that whether we're going through great times or whether we're going through rough times, we have a reason to sing. We have a reason to worship because like we talked about last week, God's promises are true. The hope that we have, the forgiveness that we have in Jesus, the reality that God has something better for us than this world could ever offer. I wanna kick off our worship by reading a passage that we're gonna get into later today. It's found in Hebrews chapter 12, verses 28 and 29. It says, therefore, since we are receiving a kingdom that cannot be shaken, let us be thankful and so worship God acceptably with reverence and awe for our God is a consuming fire. Hey, One Life. We're so excited for you guys to join us today in worship here online. Um, today we are worshiping with me. My name's Carrie. I'm from the Henderson campus. This is Chad. He's here on staff with One Life. And this is Jessica. She leads worship at the West campus. So just join us from wherever you are right now in a time of worship. And we're so excited to be here worshiping Jesus today. I've been strong and I've been broken within a moment. I've been faithful and I've been reckless at every bend. I've held everything together and watched it shatter. I've stood tall and I have grumbled and thus saying breath. I have wrestled and I have trembled towards surrender. Chased my heart adrift and drifted home again. Funded blessings till I've been desperate to find redemption. And every time I turn around, Lord, you're still there. I was found, for I was lost, I was yours, before 
before I was not ways to spare for all my mistakes that part is Your glory needs my praises, but this borrowed breath is yours, Lord, take it all. You are faithful and you are gracious, and I'm just grateful to think you don't need a single thing, but still you want my heart.
song we're going to introduce to you guys. Um, it's called Peace, and it's such an appropriate song for the time that we're in right now. And um, it's, it's the words say, "Peace is the promise that He keeps, even when we feel like we're out of control." So just join us in singing the song, and, and um, peace is His promise. You will stay true Even when the lies come Your word remains true Even when my thoughts don't line up I will stand tall On each promise you made Let the rest fade away there's a peace far beyond all understanding May it ever set my heart at ease Dare anxiety come I'll remember that peace is a promise to keep Peace is a promise to keep You will stay true Welcome, uh, One Lifers. Uh, I'm back. This is my third day. I was going to wear something floral, but uh, Matt stole my outfit. So this is all I could have. So this is what I have. But I want to talk uh, some more, uh, follow up a little bit of, uh, about the, the Father being the source of all things and, and that the resources that we have that he's given us are time, talent, and treasures. Uh, I want to read from 1 Corinthians uh, 8, 6. And it says, yet for there is but one God, the Father from whom all things came and from whom we live. And there's but one Lord Jesus Christ through whom all things came and through whom we live. So all of our resources come from that source. So let me unpack uh, an example that you may have even experienced this in your own life. Uh, if you're a parent 
or if, if, you've been, if you have been a child, we're probably batting 100% on that, probably a good guess. So even if you've been a child, I, uh, you can appreciate this example. I remember Father's Day, I have two sons, I remember Father's Day and Mother's Day, but especially Mother's Day because that was my time to give my sons when they were younger money and we'd go shopping to get their mom something. So that is one of my favorite analogies because my sons didn't have anything to give but their time and their talent. I would give them treasure of which they would then take and they would go buy their mom something. And then I can just remember there as they sought things out to buy, they would think of her, what she might like. And then came the day, came Mother's Day, whenever they would present that gift to their mom. And so I just step back from that. I'm thinking, wow, I as a father got to see my son's joy in seeking and then giving. Then I got to see uh, their mom's joy in receiving the gift. The source, was the, the source was the father, which would have been me in that case. The resources were the money and the time and the talent that they took to pick the things out that they did and give to their mom. And so it's one of my favorite examples of participating in the father's joy of generosity. You see that in each, in each party there. And so I, I want to just say an out loud thank you, God, for allowing us to participate in the joy of generosity because it is your heart. Um, so as we move on uh, in, in this journey of generosity, I've, I've said this before very unashamedly, if you have not walked out into participating in that generosity with, with, your, with your treasure, you, we've got an app, you can give online, but I do ask that you take that step of faith of fo trusting and following Jesus with the, with the resources that he's given you because again, he is a source. And if you've been giving, uh, I'm so, I so thank you to be a part of, of a giving church. I thank you for doing that because it is encouraging me as I see gifts coming in over and above what people have been doing. I thank you, and if you've been giving all along, again, that faithfulness that I see, I thank you for that because, again, that encourages me and that encourages others. So pray with me. Lord, I thank you for this time. I thank you that you are a generous God, that you did not withhold anything from us, but you gave your only son, that who should ever believe in him should have everlasting life, never perish. And you, Jesus, that you gave your life, and Holy Spirit, that you come and that you live in us, that is just the completion of the joy of giving, for you've given yourself and you continue to give yourself to us. So here we are, Lord. We offer our lives, our time, our talent, our treasure, because we know every resource that we have came from you, the source. Amen. Well, hey, One Life, you know, we keep saying throughout this entire service that we're offering a link at the end of the service so you can join a discussion. Now, it's just a 15-minute discussion. It's really just designed to connect you to people because we don't want anyone going through all that our world is going through right now. Don't do it, do it by yourself. We want to continue to offer connection opportunities. And the discussion will be there, and I think the discussion should be over the fashion choices that have been made so far. You had Matt just kind of setting the bar early with, uh, with the, you know, the flower print shirt. And then, and then Mark, you know, he came along with that pastel, nice spring-looking thing. And I'm obviously doing the play-it-safe middle-aged man deal. Or maybe Sarah is the best one of all. You guys seem to discuss that, but just take your opportunity uh, to get to know some people and not walk through this kind of thing alone. Now, I don't know if you've had this experience or not, but during all this chaos and change and that's going on, sometimes I have to remind myself what day it is. Uh, and today, I don't know if you know this or not or thought about it, it's Sunday, but it's Palm Sunday. It's Palm Sunday. And now this is, uh, for those of you who may not be familiar with this kind of thing, um, Palm Sunday commemorates the day that Jesus 
got on a donkey and he rides into Jerusalem and he celebrated and praised as the long-awaited Messiah. And people are grabbing palm branches and they're throwing them on the road and they're throwing their coats on the road, just greeting him and praising him. And uh, it's celebrated all around the world. It still would be today. But what I want to do to get us launched out today is I want to go into that setting and Jesus says something very, very interesting during that entire event that I want us to hear and, and think about. It says in Luke chapter 19, beginning at verse 41, when he, talking about Jesus, approached Jerusalem, he saw the city and wept over it, saying, if you had known in this day, even you, the things which make for peace, but now they are hidden from your eyes. For the days will come upon you when your enemies will throw up a barricade against you and surround you and hem you in on every side. And they will level you to the ground and your children within you. And they will not leave in you one stone upon another. And then he gives the reason. Because you did not recognize the time of your visitation. Now that's kind of a downer passage. I mean, he, he comes in, he's going, he's approaching Jerusalem and he weeps and he says, you didn't recognize something. Now scholars believe that he is referencing, Jesus is referencing a prophecy that was specifically given in the book of Daniel. And there's some other prophecies as well, but a very, very specific one is found, and you can read this yourself, uh, in Daniel chapter 9, verses 24 through 27. Read it for yourself because many scholars believe that it predicted this event, this day when he rides in on that donkey, all the way down to the day. It's really wild to look at it, so check it out for yourself. But they think he is referencing that. And he's saying, this is happening, but you're not even recognizing it. I'm here, and I'm coming into the city, and it's one of the things that's been anticipated for centuries, and you don't even know what's happening, ultimately. And because of that, this city itself is going to suffer in the ways that he listed off. And it's uh, historically recorded 37 years later in 70 AD, uh, the city of Jerusalem had all of those things that he talked about happen to it, quite literally. Well, the reason I want to draw our attention to that today is I think a principle is at stake. That while we're going through all the stuff that we're going through, what Jesus points out is it is possible to miss something you're supposed to see. It's possible to miss something you're supposed to see. I think during this time, if we'll, if we'll look around, we're supposed to see some things. There's supposed, there's, there's, God is wanting us to see some things that we could miss, and it is possible to miss it if we're not paying attention. So I want to explore that a little bit. Now, here's, I want to caution you, though. please don't misunderstand. I'm not saying that there's a prophecy that you can go into the Bible and, and find COVID-19 is going to arrive in 2020 and wreak havoc on the world. I don't think that's true, honestly. I know there'll probably be people who are coming out who are saying that kind of thing. I reserve the right to be very, very skeptical because usually I, I don't believe prophecies that people find after the events already happen. That's a direct contradiction of what a prophecy even is. So I'm not saying that. But what I am saying is that, think about it. People, th these people that Jesus is talking to, um, the people of Jerusalem, they're very religious people. It was a part of their culture. It was a part of who they were. It was very much a part of their lives. But what I think happened, they, they failed to see, is because it was a part of their lives. It's like religion and all, their, all the things that with Scripture and the Bible and everything was over here. And then they had all these other things in their lives just like you and I do. They, they, had, they were busy doing this and that and the other thing. They were making sure they're getting kids to soccer games. They were doing all these things. And so... It was hidden from their eyes what was really going on. Now, this past fall, we, we talked about having a Christ-centered worldview. For those of you who are at One Life, you remember we did this series called Centered. And we pointed out that if you're going to really follow Christ, what you want to have is a worldview that's Christ-centered, which means that the way I see reality is through the lens of who Christ is. So I'm always watching and I'm always scanning and I'm asking the question, God, what are you saying? What can I learn from this? How can I grow in this? And all I'm saying is there's not a fulfilled prophecy that I can look at. 
But there's a principle that we can look at and say, okay, with all of this stuff going on, what can we learn? And here's what I believe we can learn, among other things. But the one I want to pass on to you today is actually found in Hebrews chapter 12. Hebrews chapter 12 is, has a lot of context to it. I hope you'll read that after you read Daniel chapter 9. Uh, read Hebrews chapter 12. The entire thing is just amazing. It's really deep and rich and good. But I'm going to focus in on one section. And Matt, at the beginning of the service, he read a part of it. Here's what it says, beginning at verse 25. See to it that you do not refuse him who speaks. If they did not escape when they refused him who warned them on earth, how much less will we if we turn away from him who warns us from heaven? At that time, his voice shook the earth. But now he has promised, once more I will shake not only the earth, but also the heavens. The words once more indicate the removing of what can be shaken. That is, created things so that what cannot be shaken may remain. Therefore, since we are receiving a kingdom that cannot be shaken, let us be thankful and so worship God acceptably with reverence and awe, for our God is a consuming fire. And we saw that it, there's a danger that we can miss out. We can miss something that we were supposed to see. So what are we supposed to see? Here's what I'm going to argue from that passage that's one of the things that we really are supposed to see during all this that's going on. Everything is being shaken to remind us that everything will be shaken. I'm going to say it to you again. Everything is being shaken to remind us that everything will be shaken. Now, I'm not trying to be cute by saying it that way. I'm saying that what's going on right now, one of the principles that I think we're supposed to see, and it's healthy for all of us to see, is that everything's being shaken so that we will be reminded that ultimately everything's going to be shaken. Now, the context of this passage, uh, uh, he was talking to a group of Jewish people who had become Christians, and they were kind of getting a little fearful inside their faith that they had adopted. They had believed that Jesus really was the Messiah, but they were starting to back off, probably because of persecution, and they were being oppressed by their families, or any number of things. And what the writer's trying to do is to get them to hang in there and say, listen, no, you've made a right move. It's right to believe that Jesus is who he said he was. And so what he does in the, earlier in chapter 12, and what he's referencing here, is he talks about two the two major revelations of who God is in the Bible. Now, the Bible's filled with revelations of who God is, but there's two major ones. Now, the first one, especially Jewish people would strongly identify with, happened at Mount Sinai. Back in the Old Testament, God revealed himself in power on Mount Sinai when he gives the law and he makes this covenant relationship with the people of Israel. But the way he reveals himself is through storm and clouds and lightning and thunder and ultimately an earthquake. Honestly, it was a scary image. He gives this image of, I'm um, God and worship me with reverence and awe. It's kind of one of these moments that was actually frightening for people. So that was one revelation of God in the Bible that the Jewish people would have identified with. Well, later on, the other major revelation started in the manger with Joseph and Mary. This is the baby that was born. This is the one who sat on a donkey and rode in Jerusalem. This is the one who laid down his life and died on the cross for our sins and rose again from the dead. That's the other revelation. And he's saying that one back there came with the shaking. But the new one comes with peace. It comes with light. It comes with forgiveness. It's peaceful and good. And it's Jesus. And it's not this kind of threatening thing. But he says, because you've come to something so much better, See to it. And then he gives a word of warning. A word of warning. Now, here's the thing about warning. I, I, I think it comes across as just a full-on negative word. It's almost like a scary word. But warning really doesn't have to be thought of that way. I, I, I love to hike. It's one of my favorite things to do. And I've hiked a lot of different places. And I'm always grateful. Sometimes in different parts of the country, you can be hiking along a trail. And you'll see a sign that says, warning, real big. And typically it will be that there's cliffs ahead. Like you can be walking around the woods and it just seems normal, but it's almost hidden because of the vegetation and everything uh, that there can be like a 50 to 100 foot drop right there. And so the sign is saying, hey, you need to be aware of this. And I'm thankful for that. 
So the principle of warning, even though it sounds kind of negative, it's actually a thing that just says you're heading one direction, just be mindful and be safe and go this way. And you'll notice that he gives the language of warning. And what's the warning all about? He says, back then God shook on uh, Mount Sinai. But now, because he's given Jesus and because he's invited people into his kingdom, the warning is someday he's going to shake the heavens. He goes on to say he's going to shake creation itself. Everything that can be shaken is going to be shaken. And here's what I believe we're supposed to see during this time. It's giving us just a little glimpse that things ultimately will be shaken because right now things are. Think about how quickly this all happened. I mean, life seemed normal not very long ago and it kind of turned on a dime. And what did it affect most? Two essential things that we typically rely on. Our health and our wealth. Our health and our wealth. That's what's being shaken. And it's going through that right now. Now, I, I need to say this. I, I really do believe, I'm very optimistic about the future. I believe these things are going to be restored. I, I believe things are going to get back to normal. And so I don't want to paint too grim of a picture. Now, I can't guarantee it, but I really think that's true. What I really think, is, though, is going on is God is just doing us the favor of, of a warning shot across the bow of our lives, and He's doing it globally. That's something we ought to listen to. That things will ultimately be shaken. Everything will be. But right now you get to feel what it feels like. Because <laughs> here's why. There's coming a time for every single person under the hearing of my voice, including me, where you and I are going to lose our health and our wealth. It's called death. It's coming for everybody. And what this passage reaffirms, it's not only come for everybody individually, it's coming for the entirety of creation. God is going to shake everything. And that's why he says, you're being given a kingdom that can't be shaken. Build your life on things that cannot be shaken. As you're looking around, of course, health is important and wealth is important. We need economy. We need our needs met and all that. And God knows that stuff. But don't build your heart and life on it. Don't let it be this compartment that's over here. Like those people on Palm Sunday, whenever Jesus rode in that day, when they were, they were so distracted that the religious thing was kind of over here. It was just a part of things that were a lot more important on the side. And when everything was shaken, they didn't have anything to remain. That's the call. There's three kinds of people anytime we talk about this stuff. First of all, there are those of you who are Christ-centered. You're following Him. You are receiving with what this passage says. You're receiving a kingdom that cannot be shaken. You're in. You're doing it. Now let's remind us ourselves of, of what a kingdom really is. What's the kingdom of God? That was Jesus' main message. He came to introduce the kingdom of God. The kingdom of God, the kingdom that cannot be shaken, is the extent of God's rule. And what it means is that Jesus provided the way through His death and resurrection in His life. He invited us all into where we could be citizens of His kingdom. And that means the extent of His rule. That means, like if you're the king of Denmark, you're the king within the borders of Denmark. And it's basically saying God is building a kingdom in the hearts of people where, what do the citizens do? We do what the king says. We, we adopt the attitudes that he wants us to have. We treat our relationships the way he wants us to treat our relationships. We handle our money the way he wants us to handle our money. Everything comes under the king. And there is a group of us that that's truly, sincerely how you're really trying to live. And that doesn't mean you're perfect. That doesn't mean you're better than anybody. It simply means that's truly the desire of your heart. And you're receiving that kingdom and you're living inside it. And it's conscious. Now the second group of people are people who have been introduced into that kingdom. You actually did come to Christ at one point. You realize you need to be forgiven of your sins. You believe He rose again from the dead. And you said, God, I want to be in your kingdom. And you were fired up about it. Maybe you got baptized. And you were in. And you were doing the things of the unshakable kingdom. And listening to the king. But then over time, and I understand it because we've all been here. You just kind of let it slide over and become this thing, this little piece of your life. And it wasn't the way you truly saw life as a whole. And then the third group is this. Those of you who have never been in the kingdom. And this is where we've all been at one time or the other. We all started this way. We're our own kingdom builders. 
Uh, we've built our own kingdom. We, it's my life. I'm going to do what I want to do, and I'm going to do my thing, and I'm going to build my own kingdom. And that's what he's saying. Listen, your own kingdom is not going to stand the shaking, and the shaking is coming. And right now, you get just a little bit of taste of what that shaking is going to look like. And so the call is for you to say, hey, I don't want my own kingdom. I want your kingdom. Please establish your kingdom. You, and then you could be in the, in the place where you can receive an unshakable kingdom because that's what Jesus called us to be in. And he's just saying now, see to it, see to it that you don't refuse him who speaks. Be warned. It's coming. So use the warning right now. Well, it's even still peaceful and say, Lord, I don't want to build my own kingdom. Or, Lord, I need to get reconnected and very much aware of your kingdom. Take me deeper. Make me the person that you want me to be. And then he gives a very, very practical outworking of that. And that's what I want to leave you with. Notice what he said. He said that, therefore, since we are receiving a kingdom that cannot be shaken, what should be your response? He said, let us be thankful and so worship God acceptably with reverence and awe. If you come into the kingdom, that's the, supposed to be your response. Like, I've been given this kingdom and I'm there because of Jesus' death and his resurrection. I'm there and it's been given to me. Let's worship him with reverence and awe. I, I always want to caution, caution reverence and awe because I think a lot of times we naturally think of that. It means like, ooh, it's kind of a scary thing and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to bow. And it means to be quiet or, or silent. And we've learned from the book of Psalms as we've talked about them the last few summers. The book of Psalms shows us what worship really looks like. And, it, and reverence and awe is not silence. Uh, it can include dancing. It can include shouting. It can include hitting cymbals and playing guitars. And, and as awesome as the worship teams are online, Aren't you also kind of missing that being in the room where it's really, really loud? I can't wait till that day comes back, right? Where we're going to shout and we're going to sing and we're going to have a blast. That can be reverence. It can be. Uh, I remember uh, I, I got to see the Sistine Chapel, which Michelangelo's amazing, you know, masterpiece. And I got to, the only thing I hated about it was everybody was shushing each other all the time. You know, you stand there with your group or you're talking to your wife or whatever. You know, that's a really awesome painting. Look at that. And people, shh, 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 shh because they were trying to be reverent and in awe. But again, the Bible doesn't say that's reverence and awe. It actually gives you the foundation of the right response to receiving a kingdom that cannot be shaken. What did he say? He said, be thankful. Be thankful. That's, where, that's the foundation of reverence and awe. You know what gratitude is? Gratitude in many ways is noticing. It's noticing. Remember what Jesus said? This is hidden from your eyes. You miss the day. Gratitude is the practice of noticing what you have. When we're grateful, we're showing we appreciate what's really, really going on. I don't know if you've ever had this experience or not, but I think most of us, whenever we receive gifts from others or we give gifts to others, there's things typically that we ourselves could buy, uh, but we don't for whatever reason. Maybe we feel a little guilty and we don't necessarily want to put that in our budget, but then someone gives it to us and we're like, ah, that's really cool. Thank you very much. But have you ever received a gift that you knew for a fact you could not buy? It was something that was well beyond your resources and your abilities. You ever had that happen to you? Well, I have a few times in my life, and here's what I know. At that point, all you have is thank you. It's very, very humbling, and it's, it, it sensitizes your heart. Someone does something amazing for you, you know you can't do for yourself. You're just like, oh, thank you. Thank you so much. As those who are receiving a kingdom that cannot be shaken because of who Christ is, and what he did, and his resurrection from the dead, Really, worshiping God acceptably is saying thank you. So I want to challenge us going into this week. Let me give you an action step. As we're going through this crisis, I want you to open your eyes and try to see what God wants you to see. But here's one of the things I think you're supposed to see. Let's be extravagant um, in our thankfulness. Let's be extravagant in our thankfulness. We talk about extravagant worship. Well, that's the ground of worship. Let's be extravagant with our thankfulness. And what that means is, first of all, literally saying, 
God, thank you that I'm, I'm receiving a kingdom that cannot be shaken. If that's who you are, that's what you know you have. And literally say those words. I was challenged years ago, and I did it for a long time. Make thank you the very first words that ever come out of your mouth when you first wake up in the morning. God, thank you for fill in the blank. I'm saying, God, thank you for a kingdom that cannot be shaken. But then take it further and just say, Lord, thank you for the fact that I can walk from one side of the room to the other. Thank you for the fact that I can breathe in and out. I can see or I can feel or I can experience or I can relate. I can do just just start being extravagant in your gratitude. Start picking out things in your life. You're, you're going to say, hey, I'm thankful for that. I give you thanks and I'm grateful for what you've done. Let that be an action step because what it will do, it'll help you to see. It'll help you to notice. I want to close this out with a word of prayer. And uh, just bow your heads with me wherever you are. And I want to, first of all, Father, thank you for a kingdom that cannot be shaken. And as we're watching the entire world be shaken on so many different levels, I thank you that you're giving us something that can, is out of reach of all those things. That even when we lose our health or our wealth, we have something that remains. Thank you for that, for all of us that have that. And if you don't have that, and you know consciously you don't, there's never been a time that you've received Christ in your life, I want to challenge you right now. Just, just say something in your own heart, in your own words, something like, Lord, I want to be a part of your kingdom. I believe in what Jesus did for me on the cross and his resurrection from the dead, and I want to follow. I want to live under your kingship and your kingdom. Give me what cannot be shaken. And he will. It's that simple. It's free. And then spit the rest of your life saying thank you. So Lord, again, thank you. Thank you for the warning shot across the bow. Thank you for what's going on in our culture, not for the bad things, that bad things are happening to people, but so we can be aware of what you're really doing ultimately. Thank you for that hope. Thank you for who you are, and thank you for what you've given. In Jesus' name, amen. Thanks so much for being part of our service. There is a link in the chat right now where you can click and interact with people about the message content. It'll only take about 15 minutes. Please check it out. Click the live prayer button. Our prayer team is still there. You can interact with them about anything and have them pray for you or anyone else in your life who might need prayer. Guys, thank you so much for being a part of this today. To get more information about our Easter service next week, go to onelifechurch.org update. You can also find out more about everything that's going around One Life and how to connect with kids content and all of that. If you're recording any of this and putting on social media or taking pictures of how you're being the church throughout the week, please use hashtag One Life Anywhere so we can all see that and be encouraged by that together. There's going to be some questions on the screen after this to help you continue to respond to the message today. Guys, thank you so much for being a part of this, and we'll see you next Sunday.